In today's video, we are going to see if we can make a giant Tootsie Roll, and if we can, what else we can make using the same recipe. Guys, they gave me a new kitchen! Because we destroyed the last one. Not really, but we do have a few new sets for us to play with, so it'll be very interesting for you to see what else we might be able to do in the coming videos. But for today, we are going to be using this new setup. So the goal for today is to see if we can make a giant Tootsie Roll. I've looked up lots of different recipes online and I found one that seems to be the easiest and also tastes the best. It's pretty simple, it just involves chocolate, corn syrup, and flavoring. So that's what we're gonna start with. Here's the basic idea. We wanna see if we can make a giant Tootsie Roll. So we have found a recipe involving chocolate, corn syrup, and different types of flavoring. We're gonna see if we can make this, and if we can do that, see if we can make some edible Play-Doh too. Now, as I've said, I have seen jumbo candies made in the past and they are awesome, but I want to make not just a giant Tootsie Roll, I wanna make it look like one of the miniatures scaled up. So that's gonna be the goal today. And when I say big, I'm talking about probably a full foot long log. So let's see if we can do that. Uh, what we're gonna start with is we're gonna have our chocolate chips and our corn syrup. This recipe is so simple. For every 12 ounces or about a cup and a half of chocolate chips that you use, it's just a half cup of corn syrup. We're gonna probably quadruple that or more just to make sure that we've got enough. So let's go ahead and get everything melting on the stove. So medium to low heat, when you're working with any type of sugar, you don't want a full high heat. You can if you're making like hard crack candy, things like that. Medium is still preferred, try not to burn it. To keep from burning, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of the corn syrup first. Yes, that will burn too, but I want that slight bit of liquid in there before I add the chocolate. So one of the bags that I got was accidentally 36 ounces instead of 24, so to make this very simple, one batch alone is going to be 12 ounces of chocolate chips to a half cup of corn syrup. So 12 ounces is a cup and a half to make it easy. So this is why I let the corn syrup heat up a little bit before I added the chocolate because I'm not using a double boiler. And when you're trying to melt chocolate without a double boiler, it can be a little bit challenging to try and melt it without scorching it. There are still a few chunks in here, not everything's fully melted, but I am gonna take it off the heat, again, just to make sure that nothing scorches or burns. I'm gonna go ahead and pour it out, and as it's cooling, the warmth from all of the melted chocolate is actually gonna incorporate any chocolate that hasn't melted yet. Perfect. While we let this cool, there are a couple of other things I wanna try. If you didn't notice before, I do have some white chocolate here as well. There's another type of candy made by the same company called Fruity Rolls. I'm gonna try and make that recipe, but we're not gonna make Fruity Rolls. All right, so we've got our white chocolate base that you use to make Fruity Rolls. However, we're gonna make a giant Tootsie Roll. I don't wanna make Fruity Rolls themselves, so I have another thought. Let's see if we can make edible Play-Doh. All right, so we've got our mix, we've got our Play-Doh, we've got red, yellow, and blue in colors, we've got a couple of different flavorings. However, I'm not entirely sure just how much I need to be mixing here. Now, an entire container says it's 16 ounces. I'm gonna go ahead and check and just make sure I know, obviously that's gonna be four ounces per container, but I want to see the volume before I start mixing. So, half a cup should be about the right amount. I'm gonna make a little bit more of each, just in case. So first we're gonna go ahead and mix our colors, make sure everything looks right, and after that we're gonna add some flavoring. Something very important to note, I am not using a liquid food coloring and I am not using a flavoring extract. What I'm actually using is a flavoring oil and a gel color. The reason why is because the consistency, once this cools all the way and has a little bit of time to settle, is gonna be the correct consistency and we don't wanna hurt that. So these have a little bit less of a liquid content. Now these colors might not match exactly, but if you're trying to prank friends about eating Play-Doh, it's still gonna work. This won't be a neon yellow, so we'll see. Now I would mix these a little bit more. Uh, you can still see a, a few swirls here and there, but we're gonna be adding some flavoring now. That's gonna mix it some more. Watermelon for our red. We've got some lemon oil for our yellow. And then 
shockingly, it was very difficult to find any sort of blue fruit flavoring. So we're gonna go ahead and go with raspberry because you see blue raspberry everywhere. Okay, something to note if you've ever baked and you've used flavoring before, if you are using flavoring oils, don't make the same mistake that I did when I was mixing the colors because this stuff is potent. I'm gonna start out with maybe two drops of each in each, just to see. All right, so we've got our different flavors. We've got our regular Tootsie Roll flavor. Here is probably the most uh, patience required part of this entire project. Well, some of these only require two ingredients like Tootsie Rolls. These ones include four with the food coloring and the food flavoring. These have to sit for about 24 hours. And the reason why is you can see just how soft this is. Even Play-Doh isn't that soft. And if you come over here to our Tootsie Roll, no Tootsie Roll, unless you've heated it up, is gonna be that soft. However, if you let it sit overnight, everything starts to sort of solidify and have the correct consistency that we're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and cover everything up, come back in 24 hours, we'll finish then. All right, so it's the next morning and everything sort of had a chance to uh, firm up a little bit over the night, so let's go ahead and see how everything turned out, see if this is the consistency that we need it to be. Now you'll notice that there's still a little bit of white. That's fine, that's just solidified uh, oil solids. But if I push on that and then push on our uh, Play-Doh, yes, the Play-Doh did get a little bit crunchy because I left it out overnight. So let's look at the middle here. That's basically the same consistency. So once we mix that up, that's gonna be perfect. All right, so I'm very excited to put these in our Play-Doh containers. I really wanna see just how close we can make this look like the actual product, but before that, I wanna see how our chocolate Tootsie Roll turned out. <laughs> that is perfect. The only difference that I'm noticing from a regular Tootsie Roll is that it actually smells a lot better because it smells like real chocolate, so. I'm not sure if we have enough for one or like one and a half, but let's start rolling this up, see how much we've got. So this is a lot of chocolate. It's very malleable. It feels a lot like the consistency of a Tootsie Roll. When I say I'm not sure if we have enough for two or even one, let me show you what I mean. We didn't just want to make the flavor of a Tootsie Roll. We actually want to make it look exactly like a Tootsie Roll. So first off, for thickness, let's go ahead and just roll this. You know, honestly, I think that's gonna be the perfect amount. Let's see. Yup. All right, so, just time to form it. This is difficult. I'm gonna toss it in the microwave. This is a terrible idea. I'm gonna do it anyways. Ah, a little bit better. All right, let's try that. <laughs> Perfect. Now, I do think that the grease from the chocolate is going to come right through this because this is not waxed paper like a normal Tootsie Roll, so I think we're gonna wrap it twice. <laughs> and there we go, one giant Tootsie Roll. All right, so we've tossed our giant Tootsie Roll into the freezer to see if we can get it to solidify, stay in that nice round shape, and while we do that, let's make some Play-Doh. So the goal here is to take out just as much as we have in our nice little Play-Doh cylindrical shapes, shape them into the same forms, and then put them into our little Play-Doh containers. <laughs> it does feel like Play-Doh. I think that's good. So we've got everything freezing. We've got our Play-Doh ready to go. Now we've got a little bit of time to kill. You wanted Tootsie Rolls from the store? Yeah, but you took like two days. Hang on, I made my own. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that looks so good. So we did freeze this, so it's quite a bit more solid. Make sure it holds that nice round shape. Although I will point out, a lot of these Tootsie Rolls, not Are so very round. Flat. Well, that's why I wasn't too worried about it. I think, Hang you, on. I think you're actually right ahead of most of these in shape. How heavy do you think this is? 
There's your brick of solid chocolate. 14 pounds, that's my guess. We should get the scale. Oh. 10 pounds, ten it's pounds. a 10 pound Tootsie Roll. Within like <laughs> one, one thousandth of a pound as far as this thing can measure. I'm gonna make you eat something really weird. Okay. That's right, it's Play-Doh. Oh, and now I'm supposed to play with it or eat it. Here's the thing. Which one do you think is the real Play-Doh and which one do you think is food? I think this one is Play-Doh and this one is food. Hope you're right. Because I'm playing with some of this one and it's very similar to Play-Doh consistency, maybe just a little bit stretchier. A little bit, a little bit. It does not taste like Play-Doh, which is good because Play-Doh tastes vile. <laughs> not that I know what Play-Doh tastes like. What flavor is this one? You can Blue guess raspberry. wrong. Okay, good. So guys, if you decide that you want to make Play-Doh and eat it and prank your friends, if you want to carry around a giant Tootsie Roll in public, we want to see it. So link us in the comments below. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Click up there if you want to see our last video and we'll see you in the next one. Talk to you then.